another argument uh, against the abolition of capital punishment is that paroled murderers would constitute a danger to the Chief, do you really think it's right to take a man's life? Under certain circumstances, yes. What circumstances? Particularly in uh, cases of premeditated, deliberate murder, rape, rape particularly of young girls, robbery with firearms, particularly where someone is killed or injured. Uh, capital punishment is exclusively a punitive and vindictive measure and is diametrically opposite to any modern concepts of treatment and rehabilitation of offenders. That's why over 90% of the wardens throughout the country have already said that they're against capital punishment. People generally want stern, strict law enforcement. Today we're having, for example, a revival of discipline in the home in order that we might curb this juvenile delinquency. People need rules by which they can be governed. The uh, religious aspects of it are that the Bible speaks very plainly in opposition to capital punishment in saying without any conditions whatsoever thou shall not kill. Well do you think that the abolition of capital punishment is coming? Well, uh, of course, quite frankly, I think that probably four or five years ago, uh, there was a lot better chance of it coming than there is now. I think with your rise in crime rate and uh, the brazenness of some of these criminals to go into people's home has uh, created a sense of uh, going back to our original conception of justice, and uh, that is of stiff enforcement, that the man has the right to protect his home and the criminal should be punished. A great many of these crimes are committed with an assessment of what will happen in the event the man is apprehended. And were he to realize that he may very conceivably receive capital punishment, it would, in my estimation, deter many of them from committing these crimes. If, on the other hand, in assessing the possibilities in the event of apprehension, a man might consider that he would get life imprisonment and thereafter through appeals, through pardons or other methods, get off. He might assess that as something that he could go ahead and chance. When a man wants to commit a crime, <laughs> it's so ridiculous to think that he thinks about sentences. He thinks about where the police officers are. Uh, he's not thinking about how much time they got. Are you truly convinced that the death penalty works, that it is a deterrent? Yes, I am. I think that there's two ways of enforcement. One is by example and the other by correction. Uh, I think there has to be a deterrent, whether it be confining a man for the rest of his, of his natural life or whether it be the imposition of death penalty. One or the other should be enforced. As far as we're concerned, capital punishment and the idea of punishment that it represents is the main stumbling block against those reforms that are badly needed in our penal system. We've had extensive studies made and very definite recommendations made, but they're usually ignored because of the apathy of the people. As far as we're concerned, a great deal of this apathy comes from the idea that capital punishment is somehow solving our problems and is going to prevent the crime that we should be doing something about. Have you found in uh, your work in police that this is a real deterrent to crime? Who can say what is a deterrent to crime? People who are going to take a human life are going to take it. If they're determined to take someone's life, they will find some way of doing it, no matter what the penalty is. You say, perhaps, then why should we use the death penalty as a deterrent? There are other types of murder. Gangland killings particularly. I recall a case now in Dallas. A family is destitute. 
because of the activity of a hijacker. A man came into a grocery store with a gun, shot the clerk working there, the bullet lodged in the man's spine, and because of the hospital bills, the man's inability to ever work again, that family will suffer for the rest of its life. That man who committed that crime, in my opinion, richly deserves the death penalty. But of course, taking his life isn't going to help the family particularly. That is true, but we do need deterrence to that kind of activity. And I sincerely feel that the death penalty for armed robbery is a deterrent to that offense. As a matter of fact, if it were a deterrent to crime, why would we, why would we be having uh, crimes in the state of Oklahoma that are punishable by death? It seems rather logical to me that if we just look at the facts and figures, that this is not a valid argument. I do not believe that people are going to refuse to commit crime just because they think they may be put to death. There are several arguments for the abolition of capital punishment. To me, one of the most important is that there is evidence of discrimination in its application. Although the law is supposed to be equal to everybody, uh, in fact it isn't. Of 83 executions in Oklahoma, over a third have been colored, and over a third have required court-appointed attorneys. In other words, the poor and the friendless seem to be the ones that need execution the most for some reason. What about this criticism that it tends mostly to get the poor man and even more often the Negro? Well, I think that's probably an unfair statement. You must first start off with this, that uh, People that are charged these time, kind of crimes are not generally the upright citizen as we know him. And consequently, you fall into a class that uh, uh, over a period of years uh, might not have been brought up right, might have some background defect, and so forth. Uh, but in a lot of instances, this is what makes up your criminal element. the days of the Puritan had witchcraft and the penalties attended to that. We no longer have that. And I would say now we have pretty well achieved the position where we have a punishment commensurate with the crime. And certainly capital punishment in the premeditated murder is in my opinion commensurate with crime. You find no uh, nothing wrong with capital punishment in the most civilized society. Then. I do not. I do not. Barbaric custom, which is a reversion to the ancient, the old, old law of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. I feel that uh, we ought to be far enough along in human relationships that we would be far removed from the idea that even though one man goes out in the, in the heat of anger or in ignorance kills another man, that uh, he should not have to pay with his life. Of course, I think it is wrong for one man to kill another, but I think it is also equally wrong for a society to exact from him his life in return. Can you foresee a time when there might not be a necessity for capital punishment? Not in the foreseeable future. Uh, in other words, under our present parole system, I don't see where uh, you could at this time eliminate capital punishment without coming back and beefing up the parole system, where there'd be some assurance that uh, a person of criminal tendencies of that nature uh, would be put out of society for the remainder of his life. And until that's done, I don't uh, see any justification or reasoning uh, how you could conceivably eliminate it. We had a judge here in St. Louis who gave a 17-year-old boy four life sentences. The boy's mother and father were already in the penitentiary. And the judge said the reason he gave him this because he was such a bad boy. <laughs> See, we have never asked ourselves why we sent a man to a penitentiary. Is it to correct him? Huh. Doesn't correct him. The crime rate is rising four times faster than the national population. Does it prevent crime? No. 80% go back. It's a school for crime. We pay for it. Look, 
These men come out, from whom do they rob? You, you people. They steal from you. I was in the legislature recently. I told some senators, I wish when they get out, yet they're going to steal. I don't want them to steal. I wish they steal from the senators and the House members. They turn white. They said, you wouldn't do that, would you? Said, that's the only way to wake you stupid people up. Well, my personal feelings is not regarded too well. I mean, how I feel, I, it's uh, purely my business, but I, it's a part of the job that I, I have to do here, like the rest of us. It's a part, my part of the job, just like the judge and the jury and the other men at work here. It's just part of the job and overall picture. They walk in and sit down here. The warden asked them if they got anything to say, and the most of them does get up and make a talk. They stand up and then they stand back up. And when they quit talking, the warden laughed them. That's all they got to say. And they said, "Why down there?" He sat back down again, and it's, it's about a minute then. Of course, he, he talks. I've seen him talk for 30 minutes. Yet, it's rattling, they don't, I don't think they don't really know what they're talking about. Just be a talking.
Uh, perhaps a police officer takes a little different view than the average citizen because of the activity that the police officer is in. A few years ago, McKinley Cantor wrote a book about the New York Police Department. In that book, he says, when a man becomes a police officer, he has bought himself a ringside seat to the greatest show on earth. He sees all the wonderful things and all the terrible things that happen to human beings. Among the terrible things that police officers see happening to human beings are the things that happen to little girls, to children, by these sex perverts, rapes, abuses. The average citizen, the psychologist, and those who are opponents of capital punishment do not see these things. They read about them. They hear about them. But they're not on the scene to see for themselves what happens to these victims. Police officers do see. It's impossible to recreate in the courtroom the actual scenes that the police officer sees. I think a police officer is in a far better position to judge the value of capital punishment and the deservedness of it than almost anyone else. But I was only 27 days away from execution once myself. Naturally, I'm um, be quite impartial to well, to capital punishment. Um, most crimes, or all crimes, are different. They're different from the people that commit them, different circumstances that lead up to the crimes. Uh, a lot of people that, for most people, and all, any person that believes in capital punishment should have to witness at least one execution before they make up their mind, because a man in death row is living, living death as it is. And I just don't think that it's right to kill him twice.